Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today we're going to further expound on the virtues of my favorite deformer, the Jiggle Deformer. And uh, you can see on screen right here, we are going to use the Jiggle Deformer to recreate cloth-like simulations. So I'm going to go over how you can use the Jiggle Deformer, uh, particle, uh, particle objects, effectors, uh, to recreate what you would normally get from the cloth engine and also go through how you can like pin things and pin certain parts of geometry down by using uh, the fall off on the Jiggle Deformer. So, and then we'll run through a bunch of options on how to get this really nice uh, uh, curves and, and, and folds and stuff like that and these creases, nice creases uh, in the object. So again, this is one of the many things you can do with the Jiggle Deformer. Uh, but let's just get started on how to uh, create cloth. All right, so let's uh, let's start off with creating plane first. Just be our little clothy thing, clothy banner. So let's make the orientation uh, positive Z, and then let's uh, increase height here. Again, like my even numbers, round numbers, 300 by 700, and then um, we'll decrease segments because what we can do is we're going to do a, a cloth kind of sim with the jiggle deformer, and uh, if we need to bump up the uh, subdivisions, we can just add the plane to a cloth nerve, but basically we want a light piece of geometry to start out with that we're going to apply them to, but we want enough geometry that we get some really nice like folds and stuff like that. So but you don't, you don't want to get too crazy. So nine by 20 is pretty good. And uh, all right, so now we're going to apply a jiggle deformer. One of my favorite deformers, not gonna lie, no secret, I'm a big fan. So we got the Jiggle Deformer as a child of our plane, and we can hit play, and nothing's gonna happen, because the uh, first thing, we actually need some stuff happening. And uh, the big thing is that there's gonna, there's this force tab, which is going to be very important with, uh, you know, getting this plane to uh, act all clothy. And this is how the Jiggle Deformer can kind of get these cloth kind of movements is because of these forces. Now, what does this forces thing mean? Well, uh, we can use particle forces uh, to kind of drive the jiggly action. So that means I can go up to all my particle forces up here and uh, get something like wind. And there's my fan. Let's make sure it's pointing the right direction. Yep, there it is. And uh, let's not make that a child of our jiggle or our plane. And uh, so what we need to do is first drag and drop that force into our tab. And the nice thing is that we actually have a built-in gravity uh, already in here. So what is that? Negative 9.61. I don't know. I forget the precise gravity number for realistic gravity, but all of a sudden you saw, uh, you can see that we got this little kind of like, ooh, kind of fell a little bit and that's due to the gravity. And you can really sense it if we do like negative 100, you can see that it really fell a lot. Uh, but the nice thing about using uh, the Jiggle Deformer for cloth stuff is uh, with cloth, you would have to make your object editable. You'd need to pin, your points or whatever that you would need to uh, pin down uh, and kind of act like a flag. Uh, but for the Jiggle Deformer, we can just use fall off. So I'm just going to choose a linear fall off. Let's see, negative Y, I think, is what we need. So uh, everything the right direction. Let's actually crank up the wind so we can actually see what the heck's going on here. Do about 50. Okay, so we're actually in the wrong direction. You can see the top of our uh, plane here is blowing. So let's go to Jiggle Deformer, our fall off, and we need to do negative, actually 
positive y, yeah. So now, this top of our falloff is kind of acting as our uh, pinning. So everything below is getting affected. Let's increase our falloff, and let's make our jiggle deformer falloff large enough here so everything right here above this yellow square uh, is not going to be affected by the jiggle deformer. And it's not going to get uh, affected by the wind either. So uh, we have our wind speed. Let's crank it up to 70. Let's add some turbulence. So now we got some a little bit of wind stuff going on. Change that to 50. And uh, let's bring the scale down so you can really uh, get uh, some of these nice little uh, little wispy folds and stuff like that. Let's, that's a little bit too much there. There we go. We got some turbulence and a wind. And actually, that's a little bit too fast. We just want some really nice, delicate whipping of the wind. Uh, so that's the the wind deformer, and we can turn up the frequency so our our noise kind of our turbulence kind of changes over time. Uh, and now we can go into our actual jiggle deformer options, and uh, we can then start adjusting stuff in here. So the first thing that is uh, important is the stiffness. So the stiffer you make it, the less that wind is going to affect it, and the less these little jiggly springs that are throughout our uh, plane object here are going to move around. But if we do something like give it 1%, you can really see that now we're getting some really cool flaggy type stuff. Flaggy is a word. Of course it is. And uh, let's just make our timeline a little bit longer here. So you can see that we now have like this cloth simulation uh, with uh, just the jiggle former, and then we can adjust this this other stuff here so we can increase the thickness, we can reduce the drag. Uh, springs and iterations, uh, springs are kind of going to uh, get less of uh, kind of folding happening, so you want some kind of springs in there. And the more springs, the more kind of folds you'll get, the more accurate a simulation you'll get. Let's just leave that at four. In the iterations, you really don't want to mess with because this kind of just adjusts the tightness of those little springs. So kind of visualize that each little polygon has all these little jiggly springs and this just kind of tightens it, the iterations. So let's leave that at four. Uh, and then the structural is kind of like how much of uh, how much structure you actually want between those little springs. So if you want a lot of folding, you would reduce the structural, uh, or if you bring it all the way up, that's kind of tightening all of the little springy things going on. So actually, if we bring down the structural a little bit, we're getting some really nice uh, little folding going on. And again, uh, this is all driven by the jiggle former and just some wind with some turbulence. So we can crank up the turbulence, uh, again, we can adjust the scale so we can get a lot of noisy stuff going on. And adjust the frequency here. Um, so what else is uh, cool? So we, we also, like I said, uh, if we want to uh, make this a lighter uh, simulation, we just bring down the, the segments. But then, you, uh, like I said before, we're losing a lot of that detail in there. So you want to be careful with uh with that with the values you're putting in here so we're getting some really nice folds going on some creases um and this is all uh editable it's all or not editable it's all um non-destructive because we can change everything in here we can uh move the width and height around height around still we can say all right let's make that longer let's move our fall off up a little more and again this is like kind of like your pin your cloth pinning is adjusting where this, uh, the top of your uh, jiggle fall off is. Uh, another important thing to kind of uh, keep in mind about fall off or just fall off in general is this clamped. So let's say we have our fall off here. Uh, what's going to happen is from the yellow square to the red square, uh, we are getting turbulence happening and the wind is affecting it. But you can see that, you know, it looks 
really stupid right after this. It's always the same constant. Uh, we go from zero jiggle to 100 jiggle, and that jiggle uh, is all consistent here. So we get this kind of weird stuff. So if we want to actually increase the strength as the fall off goes down, so say we want to go from zero to 100% jiggle and then keep going, so this would be down to like maybe 300 jiggle down here. Uncheck the clamped, and uh, that'll actually make that happen. So it'll keep increasing the jiggle strength as it goes down. And sometimes you'll want that, sometimes you won't. Um, but just keep in mind, that's what clamp does, is it clamps between strength values of fall off between uh, 0 and 100. So we'll, we'll actually keep that and just make sure that our fall off is tall enough to kind of encapsulate the entire width or the height of our banner here. Let's see, what else can we do? We can, uh, of course, go in and add that uh, negative point six or whatever that jiggle or the, the gravity is. Uh, add a little gravity to that. And uh, we can, again, add other deformers as well. We can change the direction of this wind so we can have it more facing downward or fl uh, flowing upwards. Uh, get some cool little effects going on here. So this is a lot uh, more intuitive than, you know, going into your cloth, uh, your cloth uh, tag, and then having to adjust all those values. If I just kind of, let's just grab a null or a plane. Let's get another plane. And let's just add a, uh, ba -ba -ba, where is our cloth? So to adjust uh, your wind and stuff, it's all numerical. It's all these uh, adjusting these attributes. Now, the, the benefit, the huge benefit of the Jiggle Deformer in creating cloth is that it's all visual. You don't have to mess around with like, okay, well, what is uh, five centimeters in direction X or Y or Z and all this kind of stuff. You kind of took all this out. Forget that. Go away. We don't need you. And it's so much more visual. And we're visual people. We like to see our little fan. And we can say, like, okay, this is the way the fan's blowing. I don't need to put in that it's, uh, you know, five centimeters and X and 15 and Y and all that crap. Uh, so it's all visual. We got this fan here. We can add a, another fan or we can add, uh, let's see, what else? What else do we have here? Uh, we can add some friction to the scene. Uh, let's add a rotation. Let's go ahead. And again, when you when you add a a force, you have to make sure you add it to your force field here. Jiggle and let's uh, play around with the rotation. Uh, so let's do 200 maybe. So now we're <laughs> kind of spinning around. It looks like our our uh, looks like our cloth is in a, uh, like in a washing machine. Cloth got a little dirty. Uh, so you can kind of, and even like animate this around. So you have a lot more control uh, over what's going on with a cloth simulation by doing your cloth with the greatest deformer ever created. The Jiggle Deformer. Ta-da! Well, that's it. I uh, hope you guys have fun with the Jiggle Deformer. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but I'll, uh, that's it for this. And I'm sure I'll, I'll do more Jiggle Deformer stuff. I, I got to get my, I'm wearing my Jiggle Deformer t-shirt. I'm a big fan. Uh, but I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Hope you liked it. All right, bye.